The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to thank you for joining us for today's webinar brought to you by the ESA Sales and Marketing Professionals. I'm Erica Wood, the chair for the SMP group. A couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. All callers will be muted for the duration of the webinar. So please be sure to use your questionnaire chat log to submit questions, and all questions will be addressed at the end of the webinar. Additionally, a recording of the webinar and a copy of the PowerPoint presentation will be available in the online SMP resource library at esaweb.org backslash SMP. CE credits are available for today's webinar. Please refer to your chat log to request accreditation forms. Today's webinar, The Power of Content in Marketing and Sales, is presented by Meg Cherdoff. Meg is the principal and founder of Create, Communications, Media, Marketing, a marketing firm that focuses on the tactical execution of content-driven marketing initiatives for businesses, including providers in the electronic security industry, a lawyer, writer, marketing strategist, and entrepreneur, Meg draws on more than two decades of experience in the law and media and publishing in professional and business services, marketing to develop compelling content that creates energy, engagement, visibility, and growth for her clients. Meg has been awarded the title of Content Maven and Grammar Diva, sometimes shortened to GD by Meg, by her clients. She is, pa she is passionate about well-written content, recurring monthly, monthly revenue, and the random acts of marketing in our lifetime. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Meg. Thanks, Erica. Thank you for that introduction. I appreciate it. Um, well, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm glad you could join me for a whirlwind tour of all things content marketing. Um, there's a lot of information um, that uh, I would love to impart to you guys, and I'm going to do my best to get it all done and still leave you time for some questions if you have any. Um, so let's just dive in. Content marketing. Um, Content-based marketing, content-driven marketing, content-focused marketing, these are the new marketing buzzwords that I'm sure that you have been hearing. Um, we keep hearing uh, content is key. Content is king for consumer brands, for business-to-business -business organizations, um, professional service, all across the map. We are constantly hearing the content, um, the content marketing that is the way to go. Um, it's not a bandwagon anymore. It's a bullet train, and it's left the stage. And if we are not going to get on it, we're going to get left behind. Um, this is the buzz uh, in the marketing and sales industry. Um, so, is this really true? Is this hype, or is this reality? But let's, let's look. The reality behind all of those um, those uh, sayings is this: um, almost three quarters of Fortune 500 companies are using content marketing, which means that um, industry leaders in all industry verticals are are on board with the effectiveness of content marketing. Um, 8% of business decision makers, so the B2B um, market, and almost three quarters of consumers, so the B2C market, prefer info from content sources rather than ads. They don't want to be advertised to, they want to collect their information. 61% um, of consumers say they're more likely to buy from a company that publishes content. Um, there's some statistics that I think will hit home with folks who are trying to decide whether um, Content marketing is worth it from uh, a sales and a cost perspective. Um, business to business companies that blog generate 67% more leads per month. Um, and content marketing actually costs 62% less than traditional outbound marketing. Um, the average cost to generate a lead through inbound marketing is about $143 overall um, industry um, in all industry verticals. Um, the average for outbound marketing, um, uh, advertising, traditional advertising, is comes in at about $373.75. Um, organic search leads, if we're talking about um, bringing people into your website, 
um, organic search leads have a nearly 15% close rate, while outbound marketing leads, not even 2%. So the conclusion to draw from this one is companies across all industry verticals, but more importantly, companies in this industry, including your competitors, are using content marketing for very good reasons. Uh, that said, content marketing is really not a new concept. Um, the industry's been, people in the industry have been doing it for years. Um, before it had to change the name, before it was the focus of all sorts of experts telling you how to do it, before it was a strategy. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, it was print newsletters, it was possibly paper bill inserts, it was articles written by you know, folks in the industry, folks in your company perhaps, um, in trade publications, it was presentation, uh, presentations at events, um, and it was even the early website that people started, you know, putting up when when um, internet marketing started to uh, to take hold. Um, everyone had a basic website that is content marketing uh, in you know one of its earlier uh, digital forms. This is what content marketing looks like now. The growth of content marketing um, as, a, as a marketing strategy can be directly attributed in no small measure to the development of technology, the internet, social media, and mobile. Um, so what does this mean for, for sales and marketing folks? What does this mean for your strategy? Um, it means 24-7 access to information, much of it is real time, and it changes constantly. That provides um, that provides us with um, a lot of opportunities and a fair number of risks. Um, it means that as marketers, you own and control more channels to distribute your message. Um, so you're not relying on outside media. You're not relying on trade publications. You're not relying on um, PR and media relations, um, what we like to call either um, uh, earned channels or bot channels. You're not you're no longer having to rely on advertising um, to get your um, marketing out. Um, you now have the ability to do your own content publishing. Uh, you've got your website, which is your primary own platform. You've got the opportunity to blog. Um, just a fun little statistic. Um, companies with active blogs receive 97% more leads, 97% more index and more than 430% more index pages in search engines. So having a blog is a key um, channel for your content. Um, there is explosion of social media platforms, some of which are based for B2B, some of which are based for B2C, and we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. Um, and then you have the opportunity to reach directly to your prospects and to your customers through email, through newsletters, through alerts, on the information that they might want to know. Um, you still have the opportunity to write articles for trade publications, but the platforms are greater now. It's not just a print publication, there are online publications. Um, and then you can offer your uh, customers and your prospects uh, uh, any number of resources depending on, on who your target audience is, including white papers, downloadable e articles and books, webinars, seminars, presentations like this one, um, videos, podcasts, infographics, images, it, it, it's almost unlimited in terms of what you can do with content at this point. Technology is um, the driver of content for now. It drives both the distribution and it shapes the substance um, because you need your content to fit the channel and the platform that you're using. Twitter content looks different than Facebook content, looks different than LinkedIn content, looks different than a blog. Um, all of those platforms are terrific. Your content is shaped by the limitations and the opportunities within those platforms. Um, search engine technology uh, increasingly um, determines what content gets found, what gets read, what gets promoted, what gets shared. And the noise level for our audiences continues to increase. Technology delivers content faster, more content, causing audiences to be overwhelmed with choices. 
so that our job is now to figure out how to reach those target audiences with the information that they want in the manner that they want to receive it. So how do we respond to this? How do we respond to this new landscape? We recognize that content actually is the currency that attracts the attention and gets us found by our customers and our prospects. It is an important driver for sales and marketing and business development if used correctly. So when I say if used correctly, um, the landscape may have changed. The channels may have changed. But one thing does remain the same, which is your customers and your prospects and anyone who influences that target audience drive your content strategy. The fundamental principle of content marketing and one of the biggest challenges in marketing and sales is what I like to call the harsh reality. Your customers really don't care about you. They don't care about your product. They don't care about your services. What they care about are their needs, their wants, their problems. And content marketing actually feeds very nicely into that harsh reality because it's about giving them the information that they want and need so that they're paying attention to you. It's creating visibility for yourself while giving your customers and your prospects some value-added information that actually makes their life better. It's a win-win situation that no one has to pay for and, and can actually contribute um, a great deal to your sales and marketing processes. Now, not everybody really wants to hear this message. Um, I get this message all the time. You might be giving this message to management that you need to go back and report to. It's a very hard message for people to hear. This is a response I get sometimes. Because the traditional marketing has always been um, getting your message out through advertising talking about how good your company is, how good your products are, and why people should pay you to provide the services that, um, uh, that you offer. Um, so most people actually believe in um, what we call uh, push marketing as opposed to um, what content marketing is, which is full marketing. Um, there's a time and a place for push marketing. Direct advertising does have an impact. Um, clearly hasn't met. But as we've seen um, from the statistics that we talked about earlier, um, it has less of an impact with a higher cost. Um, that's a 2% um, greater for direct uh, advertising and a significantly lower conversion rate. Um, and from a practical perspective, in the 24-7 demand-oriented marketplace, Customers and prospects have the ability to turn off and turn away from advertising, and they do it all the time. They have the technology to avoid receiving ads. They can, you know, skip over commercials on TV. Um, they just uh, are not paying attention to direct marketing anymore. Um, content marketing is not direct selling, but if done right, can have, of course, the same um, positive effect on your uh, sales and marketing process. Um, it's about attracting customers and building a group of followers by making, as I said, relevant and useful information available to them and building connections. To um, have a really, um, to have a really good effective content marketing program and to be able to report how effective your content marketing program is to management, um, you need to know and understand how content impacts every stage of the business development process. And this is a simplified version of this, what I consider the business development process, the sales process, if you will, from the customer perspective. Um, and it's one view, it's not everybody's view, but for the purposes of talking about how content marketing can affect on the sales process, I think it's a pretty good view. Um, the status quo over here on the left is where your customers and your prospects with no identifiable need for new or additional products or service. They don't, um, they're not looking for you. They're not, um, they don't have an identified need for your, whatever you're offering. Um, identify needs, and in the middle there, 
um, identify needs, evaluate options, choice, and action, um, it's when your customers and your prospects become aware of issues, potential or actual problems, um, needs for uh, products and services, needs for relationships with your companies that they didn't know they had before. And they begin to evaluate their options for filling those needs. Um, they're seeking solutions. They want to know who, who they're evaluating providers who can best provide me with, um, with my solutions to these problems. Um, and they are on their way to making choices and taking action. At the end, of course, um, is the holy grail of what your sales and marketing programs are all about, which is building in a relationship, hopefully an ongoing one, um, with those customers. Um, content marketing really has a role in each, uh, each one of these stages and can help move the needle, moving the prospect, helping the prospect move from one um, stage, one phase to the other. Um, from, I think one of the most important places that content marketing um, plays a role in, in the business process is from status quo to identify needs. I think it's critical here that content market allows you to educate and inform your clients about, or your customers, about um, needs that they may not know that they have. Um, you know, let's face it, um, marketing alarm services is not like marketing toothpaste. Everyone needs toothpaste. Everyone buys toothpaste. The need is given and the customer demand is given. And the only question really is which brand on the customer side and on the consumer brand marketing side, what else can I throw in there that they'll buy? Alarm services are not the same. Um, customers don't necessarily perceive they have a need for those services and it's our job to educate them um, in order to create that need that we can then sell. Um, content actually educates and identifies the problems that they face. Um, it triggers, it can actually trigger an awareness that moves them through the sales process. In the middle area here, um, content helps to answer the questions that your customers and your prospects have. What's the impact of what I know now? Um, and what do I do with it? What are my options for solutions? You know, what are the benefits? And what are the risks? Are there any risks to these variable solutions? What happens if I don't do anything now that I know more about um, some of these products and services or more about needs that I might have? Um, and crucial, I think, to your marketing efforts um, is, is that content can answer uh, the question, who is out there to help me with these problems? More specifically, actually, why should I buy from or work with your company. Um, and content makes the client, the customer better informed, and at the same time, it establishes your company's expertise, your experience, um, validates your credentials and your authenticity, um, sells you indirectly, um, which is what the customers and prospects are looking for. They're really looking for the information. They don't want the direct selling. At the, at the end of our diagram here is the place where people tend to forget that they need to continue to market. Um, the um, ongoing relationship aspect of it, um, this, the process is not over because you've made a sale or a closed deal. Um, content continues to engage your uh, audience. It's a value add for them that you're not asking them to pay for, but that keeps you in front of them keeps you visible, keeps you top of mind. Um, it encourages them to be a referral source, a conduit or a channel to other potential customers. Um, and it, it's really crucial for keeping them aware of new Customers may not know exist, may not know they need, may not know they want, but continuing to engage with them once they are your customer um, with content can help them become aware of their options. 
well, we can look at that as actually another way when we talk about content, which is here's what triggers customers and clients to um, here's what triggers customers and clients to buy or be, to be part of a relationship with you. Um, uh, need, um, which you talked about. Knowledge, they like to have a um, customers and prospects like to have a secure base of knowledge before they're willing to commit to things. And content provides them with that knowledge without the direct sell. Um, cost and value, which are actually two different things. Price might be a trigger for people, but and that's an absolute really. Um, the content can help convey the value to them of the products and services that they're going to be purchasing at whatever cost point or price point to talk to that. And the last one, which is I think very important, is trust. Um, trust is essential to sales and marketing today. Customers have a lot of digital resources for investigating and evaluating products and services and companies. Um, and social media actually has become a key factor in um, people's buying decisions. So content through all of the available platforms can really drive um, customer action without the direct sell. So how do we use content marketing to our advantage? So a really nice definition. Um, and I don't think actually that there is a single um, part of this definition that is not important. There, there, there's nothing in here that's just um, verbiage. It's it, it's all in very uh, all every part of this definition is important. It's the technique of creating and distributing relevant and valuable content. Key number one to attract, acquire, and engage a clearly defined and understood target audience. Key number two. And the whole point of it all was the objective of driving possible customer action. We can boil it down to two essential elements. Publishing high quality content that's not a product sale um, piece and using the content to build your relationships with your prospects and your customers. And we never lose sight of the fact that marketing is part of content marketing. Um, it must all be tied to your business development and your sales strategy. Um, so good quality content is where we start. What do we mean by that? the journalism model of, of content, even for things like Facebook posts and tweets, um, is a really helpful model, I think, to follow. Um, timeliness, it, it, you know, we, we want to provide people with timely information. Relevant, is it relevant to your target audience? Um, if it's not, they're not going to pay any attention to it, and, and worse, they're going to stop paying attention to you. Um, proximity, geography, yes but also in terms of importance of the subject to your audience. Um, impact. What's the likely impact of what you're talking about to the target audience? Conflict. Um, content that identifies a conflict or an issue or a problem actually will make your customers and your prospects sit up and take notice. Um, does this apply to me? How important is this? What are the risks if I don't um, pay attention to this? And human interest. Human interest, the story, um, is, is, is always um, uh, an essential element of your content. Because without it, you're not engaged in your office. And to drive the sales process, there are some additional elements. Um, remember, educational, not promotional. This is not direct marketing. Authoritative and useful. So help answer the questions that your customers and prospects um, are asking, um, suggest solutions. So we're not pitching our services, we're suggesting some, some solutions um, to their solution problems. Um, appropriate to the audience, so you have to clearly understand who your target audience is and um, what, they, what the information is that they're looking for. And how do you know? How do you know what they care about? How do you know what they need to know? You ask. You ask, you observe. You listen, you uh, track metrics for your um, content marketing and your sales. And from that, you can get information 
but then feeds into your content marketing strategy. And another key point that I think um, sometimes gets missed, accessible and focused on the reader. Um, in the language that they understand, um, not uh, industry jargon is, is helpful to um, create the connection with the reader. And just as a note, um, I'm not just talking about written content. Pictures, video, audio, infographics. Video is actually becoming a huge, um, a huge uh, space for content marketing at this point. Um, YouTube uh, for both business to business and business to consumer. Um, it's a terrific platform for reaching your target audience. Um, and you should consider incorporating images and all of the non-written content into your uh, content marketing if you can. Um, so one of my um, absolutes in content marketing I shall not commit random content. The second part of the equation and the primary reason why most companies' content marketing is declared ineffective um, or, or a failure, uh, either by management or by sales, is that um, there's a lack of strategy with it that's tied to business objectives. Companies know they need to produce content. They just start producing it without much thought as to why they're doing it, who they're targeting, or how they're going to use it. Uh, a statistic that I read not that long ago is that approximately 70% um, of content that's created um, never gets used effectively because companies start um, creating content really nilly and then don't have a use for it or don't have the proper platform for it or, or don't use it correctly. So after a short period of time, after implementing a content marketing strategy, um, there's a lack of effectiveness, there's a lack of success, which is usually measured in terms of new business. And someone, management or um, someone in sales and marketing, declares that content marketing just doesn't work for them and they stop the program leaving behind one of the best strategies for reaching your constituencies, your customers and your prospects, simply because it wasn't implemented in a way that tied context to your sales and marketing goals. Sales and marketing, business development, and content all have to be aligned in order for content marketing to be an effective strategy. Content marketing um, has to include market intelligence, it has to include execution models, and it has to include, obviously, high quality content. Remember the part of the definition that we, um, we saw earlier, and, and I can't say this enough. Content marketing has to have the objective of driving profitable customer action. The point of content marketing for you is driving the sales process. Without that piece, um, your content marketing is, is going to be ineffective at best and a waste of money at work. So we've talked a little bit about what content marketing is um, in sort of broad strokes and a little bit about um, some of the elements of it. Um, content marketing is about what you're saying, but it's also about making sure that your target audience receives your message in all the places that they're looking for. Delivery is an essential um, aspect of content marketing. Um, the, so the content that produces engagement and impacts your sales must reach the right audience, and it must reach it in the right format. So let's talk a little bit about delivery channels. Business to business or business to consumer? Question number one, who are your customers, where are they looking for information, and how do they want it packaged because delivery impacts the form of the content um, that you are going to be putting out. Now, there is overlap in the delivery channels for both business to consumer and business to business. Those delivery channels might be used a little bit differently, um, but we have the same um, array of platforms available to us, and we can then pick and choose what works best. For business to consumer blogs, your own website that's consumer facing or a smaller site that's 
consumer facing if you have both a business to business and a business to consumer um, elements to your company. Um, social media, the main platforms for business to consumer are um, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Email, newsletters, bill inserts, things like that. These are some terrific delivery channels for business to consumer. Business to business, again, we have blogs. Um, your own website, the business focused end of it, or a smaller site, a different site that for the business part of your um, business to business part of your company. Social media, the main platform for social media for business to business use um, is actually um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn generates more leads for business to business companies than Facebook, Twitter, or blogs individually. Um, and uh, it's also a great platform for longer form content, articles, white papers, uh, for, for reposting or repurposing some of the content that you've already created. Um, on the business to consumer side, um, just to go back for two seconds here, um, I do want to make a note of the fact that, um, that interesting content is actually one of the top three reasons that people follow brands on social media, and social media sites and blogs. Um, accounts for 23% of all time spent online um, and reach 8 out of 10 uh, internet users. So the delivery channels, the, the digital delivery channels are very, very important if you are business to consumer company um, specifically. It's been said of social media that social channels are like puppies. If you don't feed them, they'll die. I think this goes beyond social media. I think all of your delivery channels are like that. They need care and attention, um, or they will wither. Um, Content-focused marketing requires steady flow of new information, of relevant content, and delivered to your audience regularly and through the appropriate channel. If you let your blog sit with that new content, people won't come to see it anymore. Traffic drops. And so do search engine rankings for that matter. So your your influx of the new content has a tremendous impact on people's continued focus and your continued visibility. Social media especially requires uh, fresh content. Um, it doesn't have to be daily, but you can't let a Facebook page, um, your Twitter account, or LinkedIn sit for weeks at a time without posting new content. People will stop will stop paying attention to Okay, so content is, is um, imperative. Using your channel is crucial. The content marketing is actually a waste of time if your customers and prospects can't find you. Search engine optimization maximizes the power of your content to bring your constituencies, your target audiences, to you to drive your marketing and your business objectives. Um, is your content pulling your target audience to you? Um, is it having the desired effect? So when people hear search engine optimization or SEO, um, it's just get a little scared. Like, if it's a form of voodoo or magic that's practiced on the internet to appease the Google gods, right? Um, and if they don't go along with it, if they don't know how to do it right, if they don't have the exact right practices, they're going to be smited, low smited, um, with low search engine rankings. So here's the reality. SEO is any activity you undertake to improve your website's visibility and ranking for organic searches. We're, we're not talking about, um, you know, we're not talking about paid advertising on Google at this point. Um, and by the way, Anyone who tells you, including me, anyone who tells you that there's only one right way to do SEO um, and that they can guarantee that they can boost your search rankings without focusing on the quality of your content um, is either lying or possibly engaging in shoddy or underhanded or bad SEO practices that will eventually get you punished by Google and other search engines. All right, so sometimes this is what it feels like, right? You're out there, in, and your website is out there in this galaxy of other websites, other competitors' websites. How is anyone ever going to find you? How do they find you in this galaxy? 
And this is actually really the reality. Um, that content marketing using all of the appropriate channels will help get you found. It will help bring people to your website. And of course, SEO, it, as good SEO practices, is part of that. More reality. SEO is never done. It's a journey, not a destination. Google changes its algorithm uh, 337 times a year, approximately, which is almost every day, including some weeks. Um, some changes are minor. They're not really ever reported. Some changes are major. Um, they have names, and uh, they're in the past, and they cause uh, an inordinate amount of worry for people who are doing um, marketing and sales because they feel like the change in the algorithm is going to cause their search rankings to drop or um, it, it's a catastrophe. This is a little bit what focusing on SEO is going to feel like. It's about, it, it's just like chasing your own tail, right? You're going around in circles, around in circles, around in circles. So what do we do instead? We start with compelling content. We practice good, basic SEO hygiene, which we'll get into in a little bit, and we stop worrying. You can't continue to chase Google's tail because you'll never catch it. The only thing you're going to end up catching is your own. Content powers SEO. It's not the other way around. Um, good content improves your search engine results. Um, fresh content, new content, um, on a regular basis uh, is imperative. Um, and good content creates what we call search engine credibility when your content is linked to the other websites and blogs that tell Google and other search engines this is uh, a site, this is a website that is credible, it's authoritative, it's a destination, your search engine rankings go up. So, so I'm going to get a little bit into some SEO basics, but I'm not going to do an in-depth review because we can't. We just don't have time. Um, but I did want to give you a little bit of education so you have um, some background to take back with you. Um, online, on-site, on your website, SEO, um, make sure that your search engines can find you, can find your web pages, um, and can find you appropriately. Um, and again, as I've said, this is accomplished with your content. Um, details, helpful, fresh, new, some, give Google something to index on a regular basis, and Google will be happy. And frankly, the machine is not the focus. Your customers and your prospects are. And what makes humans happy makes Google happy, too. Offsite SEO is linked to your site from other platforms, um, which tells the search engine as I said, that your website is an authority in the industry and a website that they should trust, which again is your search engine rank. So just a little bit about you know your on-site, your website practices. And again, um, we're not talking here about um, website building or SEO, you know, for your complete and total um, website because we just didn't have to do that. But there are some challenges to uh, SEO on your website that are um, related to the content. So I'm just going to uh, run through them a little bit here. Um, your messaging and your content on your website have to be consistent. What are, what's the main purpose of your website? What are you trying to convey to your, um, to your target audience, to your customers, to your prospects, to people in the media who might be covering the industry? Um, what's your message? And let's make sure that your content, the new content that you put up there, as well as the existing content that's sort of static on your website, um, are consistent. Um, keywords. There's a lot of focus sometimes on keywords um, for search engine optimization. Keywords do not drive content, should not drive content. It's really the other way around. Content will naturally have many of the right keywords. Um, you can and you should. Uh, engage in the process of developing keywords. Um, there are a number of steps that you can take to develop the appropriate keywords that will help with search engine optimization. And you can and you should use those keywords if 
they fit naturally in the content that you're posting. It's got you the new content that you're posting. Don't jam a keyword in there if it doesn't fit, because Google will sense will know that, and you'll get paid for it. Um, using internal links to help people navigate through your website also helps the search engine navigate through your website. As I said, what's good for humans is what's good for the search engine. Um, and website structure uh, uh, is critical, um, and what I call hygiene, because if you've got broken links, humans can't follow those links on page to page, and now we're from Google. So let's focus in a little bit on website content, um, because we're talking about content as the main point here. Um, again, back to the journalism model for a second here. Um, uh, relevant, readable, um, approachable, accessible to your customer, um, timely. Um, oh, oh, you know, is, is there a, is there a news hook? Is there a reason why we're talking about this now, um, or is this just uh, something that's a well-known fact that we're repurposing? That's not necessarily a bad thing if it's just what we call an evergreen topic, topic that people are continuously uh, interested in. In which case, you can put fresh content up there that add to that discussion. Um, but in the main, if you're putting something up there, you, you want it to be relevant um, because it's newsworthy. The X factor, the human interest that we talked about earlier. Um, the last two are things that um, I'd like to focus in on for just a second because they tend to be challenges when people are starting content marketing uh, programs. You do not need to reinvent the wheel. Um, you don't need to generate brand new content every time you want to push content out through one of your channels. A single piece of content can be repurposed multiple times across all of your channels, including your website, social media, um, uh, email, newsletters. You don't need to reinvent the wheel um, every single time you want to refresh. And low-hanging fruit. Um, yes, there's timeliness. Yes, there's relevance. Yes, there's, um, there's new and fresh. But you already know some of the hot issues in your industry without doing much, if any, research. Start there. Um, people, are, yes, people are talking about it, which is why you should do so. Just because someone else is talking about a particular subject does not mean that it's now off the, the table for you. It brings you into a industry-wide conversation or a market conversation and establishes you as someone else in the know, and that's not a bad thing. Just a quick um, review of, of links. Um, using links in your content um, internally to refer to other content on your site, as long as it's a natural fit, is a terrific way to move people through your website. Using links in your on-site content to others' content, the external links, also a good thing if you do it carefully. You don't want to take people away from your website too often, but if it's a fantastic resource, why not? And it um, generate the possibility of external links back to your site and encourages uh, others to link to your, to your content, bringing them to your website. Also uh, increases your search engine optimization as well. Um, as I said, some, some common sense about on-site links. Um, use them in context if they fit. Uh, if they don't fit, if you jam them in there, it's not worth it. There are other ways to navigate people through your website. Um, make sure that the link matches the destination. Um, and uh, again, broken links on your own pages and external resources um, are useless. And they will affect your search engine ranking. Because if Google can't follow a link, it, it can't, it can't, um, it's useless. And same with humans. Humans get very annoyed with broken links. And they, start to see you as someone that is not good at content um, Again, off-site link building, which is building links out off of your website on other platforms, the people platforms, that will bring um, them to your site at some point. Also, in case you said, such as an optimization, um, good content does that because people will want to read um, refer, um, link to, 
uh, send to other people who will also link to Zoom using it as um, a tool to encourage conversation that will bring people back to your website. Um, there are some no no's, however. Um, don't pay for links, it's not worth it. Um, participating in too many directories will actually hurt your, um, hurt your uh, Google rankings. Um, and a big one, be careful the websites that are linking to you. Uh, you want to um, be aware, you want to monitor who's linking to you because poor quality websites, scam sites, and pornographic sites will not help you and they actually will do you some harm. Okay, that was a lot of information. So where do we go from here? The good news is that you are probably already doing some content marketing. So websites, blogs, emails to customers and prospects, maybe some hard copy um, newsletters or bill inserts. Um, maybe people in your company are writing articles. That's terrific. The bad news is that you're probably not doing it with the highest effectiveness. Um, but the good news is that you can engage in effective content marketing with a little more proactive planning and some strategy. Um, these are the basic uh, challenges to um, content marketing. Um, inspiration and ideas, finding the topics to, to write on and figuring out what they are. Um, uh, resources, finding the time to create the, top, the content and to um, manage the distribution of the content. Um, and then it's essential if you're creating content and you're putting it out there to that dot universe that we saw earlier, that you're monitoring your content in your channel. Um, your website, your blog comments, your social media channels, which is part of that you're monitoring those channels and that you have action plans for responding um, to what we call user-generated content or customer content. Um, content marketing is a conversation. Actually, in some ways, a two-way street, whereas direct marketing is one way. Um, and you want to um, cultivate carefully that two-way conversation. Um, so you need to know how you're going to be responding to um, conversation that comes back at you through your channel. Um, many of these content marketing uh, challenges have to do with um, a lack of planning which we talked about before, um, because the lack of planning, as we said, almost guarantees poor results, which is going to lead to the conclusion that content marketing just doesn't work for you, um, which will cause you to abandon really what is one of the most cost-effective uh, marketing strategies in the industry today. So where do you go from here? Um, if you are looking to get some uh, help with your content marketing, um, by the way, 53% of companies overall across all industry verticals outsource some part of their content marketing, um, whether it's strategy, uh, implementation, measurement, monitoring, um, response, uh, and why? Because those companies are experts in their industry, in their core functions, and they're not expert in content marketing. So they've gone to the experts for help. Uh, so if you're going to go to, a, to an outsource uh, provider or consultant, I'm sure are some things that you want to think about. Obviously, um, industry knowledge or subject matter expertise helps. Um, there's often a um, there's often a concern that if you are um, hiring someone to help with your content, who works in the industry and has other clients in the industry, that there's going to be a conflict of interest. Um, I actually believe that um, when you have someone who works in an industry with other clients, what you're getting is their expertise, and hopefully what you're getting is their dedication to your content marketing strategy that is unique to you. Because your content marketing strategy is about differentiating you from the competitors, and so your content marketing strategy is going to be different than uh, your competitors and other people in the industry. Um, experience. How long have they been doing it? What have they been doing it? Uh, what have they been doing? Who have they been doing it for? Does, does the person, does the um, content marketing strategy or, or um, provider fit the need that you've identified? 
Um, are you looking for strategy? Are you looking for thinking implementation? Are you looking for enterprise-wide planning? Are you looking for help with your blogs and your newsletters and your and your um, social media? Are you looking for someone to help write or edit articles? Um, those are all the needs that you might have. Make sure that the person that you hire um, fits those needs. Um, a content strategist might not be great at implementation. So do a little bit of research and have a conversation about what it is that their core functions are. Um, check references, please. Um, we want to know who that person has worked with and how their existing or past clients feel about them. And personality. I think personality uh, is actually um, one of the biggest factors in working with someone um, who create your content marketing strategy or implement our content marketing strategy. Um, there are many providers out there. Not everyone is going to be a good fit for you. So um, talk to a couple of um, talk to a couple of different providers and see their way of working and communicating with support. Okay. Do it yourself content marketing. Um, some tips to get you started. You don't have to do everything at once, but pick um, the areas that you'd like to focus in. I would recommend for whether it's business to business or business to consumer, um, blog, fresh content on your website, dipping your toe into social media, um, plan first, as we talked about, then execute. Um, don't start writing content that you know is great without a plan for using it. And again, work smarter, not harder. Um, Low-hanging low fruit. What do you already know? What do you have that you can repurpose? Um, you know, what's in your content uh, archive now that you can dust off and start using? Um, other people's content. It is okay. In fact, it prefers that you um, refer to, use, quote, um, retweet, repost uh, other people's content. It's about link building, and it helps you, and it helps them. Again, as I said, don't reinvent the wheel. If you're choosing a multi you know, multiple platforms, one white paper or one newsletter has uh, you know, any number of individual pieces of content that you can pull out and use on other platforms. We should not be continuously writing new content on the same subject. That's my rule. No random acts of content speak. Your content must, at all times, have a purpose related to your sales and marketing. Some of the ways you do that if you're doing it yourself, know your audience. Who are you trying to reach and who are you trying to influence? Because who determines both of the what what you're going to be talking about, what your subjects are, what, your, what the, the nuggets of content are that you're going to want to be distributing, um, and the how. It, who your audience is and where they want to find you and where they're looking for information is going to determine your delivery channel um, and your, the form of your content delivery. Um, what do they care about? What does your target audience care about? What keeps them up at night? What should keep them up at night? What do you know that they don't know? Tell them what they need to know. Help them identify why they need you. Um, and how can you reach them? Again, uh, what are your delivery channels? Where are they looking for you? Let's take advantage of um, those channels so that you're actually reaching the appropriate audience and you're helping your, um, your audience come back to you to your website. Um, to, uh, to find the information that they need and hopefully move them along the, the sales or business development process to get to the holy grail, which is the sale or the deal. So do we have questions? So a question that I'm asked uh, an awful lot um, uh, is, you know, how often should I be um, putting out fresh content? Um, do I really have to be tweeting every single day? Do I really have to be posting something on my Facebook page? Um, how often do I have to put up a blog? 
um, and the answer to that is that um, I think that your content uh, marketing and your distribution should really be tied to your audience um, and who they are and what they're looking for. And business to consumer and business to business are um, really two different focuses. Um, and there's a very fine line in some ways between um, too much information, it becomes bothersome, and not enough information so that you fall off the radar. And I really do think that the key to that is some of the um, elements that we talked about um, that make up good, good compelling content. Relevancy, timeliness, um, and uh, understanding through feedback from your audience from the conversations, from metrics, from um, you know, looking at click rates and emails, if you have the ability to do that, how many people visit your website, your website has like what's going to have the the most impact on um, on your audience and how those things can be. Oh, okay. Um, Meg, thanks so much for the content. We've got one more quick question. Sure. Um, so you mentioned for B2B about um, LinkedIn was kind of the best source. Do you recommend that people post more on their personal timeline or their company page? Well, okay, so there is, yeah, yeah, okay. Let me back up and, and tell you a little bit more about why I say that. Um, there's two ways to track uh, from a B2B perspective, there's two ways to attract the right kind of uh, attention to your company. Um, one is to highlight your company as your company, and the other is to um, highlight the key personnel in your company that you'd like to have as the face of your company as industry experts or thought leaders. So the answer there is really yes, your company page should be um, posting fresh content um, uh, you know, whatever content you're putting out in terms of white papers or blogs or articles um, should always go on your company page. Yes, I would recommend that. But you should consider who in your company should also be um, visible um, from, a, from a traditional public relations and media relations perspective, who's the face of your company, and to make sure that their pages um, are also being updated. Um, there is a tr there are some terrific tools, um, some terrific programs um, that can help you um, implement that on an enterprise-wide basis. If you are um, interested in that, I would recommend um, PeopleLink. If you have a big enough company um, that uh, has multiple employees that could be brand ambassadors for you, um, I, I would recommend that platform. But you don't really need to do that. Um, you just need to focus, make decisions with management on who needs to be the face of the company and use them as brand ambassadors too. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, well, if there are no more questions, I'd like to remind everyone that a recording of the webinar and a copy of the PowerPoint presentation will be available in the online SMP resource library at esaweb.org backslash SMP and CE credits are available upon request. Please refer to your chat log for further instructions. Um, also, check out the other ESA professional group webinars and events at esaweb.org. And if you plan to visit, if you plan to go to Vegas next month for ISC, be sure to connect with the ESA Young Security Professionals for the for YSP West on April 2nd. The annual event always provides to be an excellent relationship building opportunity, along with a heavy dose of fun. Details, including registration, can be found on the ESA events cal calendar. Once again, thanks for participating in today's webinar, and we appreciate your time and hope that you found the content to be useful. Enjoy the rest of your day.